We're learning that Jeffrey Epstein reportedly was trying to set Prince Andrew up to extort the Queen. That's according to financial advisor John Bryan, who also dated the Prince, uh, Prince Andrew's ex-wife, Sarah Ferguson. Epstein blackmailed rich men and made them pay to avoid scandal, is what he's claiming. He said, quote, I believe Andrew is innocent. If he was genuinely involved, as alleged, Epstein would have used that to try and bribe the queen into paying millions to protect her family. Well, Prince Andrew has denied any wrongdoing. He settled a lawsuit with Virginia Griffre, one of Epstein's victims, back in March of this year. Robbie, how do we know, uh, or how how does you know um, uh, the, uh, John Bryan know that Epstein didn't try to bribe the Queen? We don't, <laughs> right? I mean, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, are there some kind of disclosures of yeah. the royal pocketbook that would make it very obvious if there were, were any money spent in a way that it shouldn't have been? Are we so convinced that the, there aren't other ways to make? Because I'm just saying, I'm not the 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 posture here of the various actors is very odd. You have, you know, someone who had a relationship with the you know the the person involved coming to his defense in a way that seems like sort of credible, but also this accusation that, you know, you can't be bribed usually uh, unless there's some evidence. It doesn't mean you absolutely did the thing that you're being accused of, but unless there's some um, evidence that would uh, reflect poorly on you. So it, I don't know. It is, yeah, it, I don't it, buy it, this guy's defense of posture. Prince Andrew at all because, I mean, what if, what if, uh, like, what what kind of happened is that Prince Andrew has taken a lot of heat for this, so maybe he just, they were like, no, we're not going to pay you, or you know, they just tried to ignore Epstein, and then this information kind of leaked out, right? That that like, that doesn't mean there was nothing improper. Like, that's kind of what happened. So I don't I, I don't buy that as as like, oh, Prince Andrew is necessarily innocent. Um, I mean, like he 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 paid for his public association with Epstein, you know, based on some information about that. So that could just be, maybe maybe they didn't pay Epstein and then this happened, or it, like that doesn't necessarily mean that he's innocent. So I, I don't get that part of it necessarily. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, meanwhile, uh, Virginia Giffray's lawsuit against Alan Dershowitz has been dismissed, according to the New York Times. Giffray, who accused the law professor of sexually assaulting her when she was a teenager, now says she may have made a mistake. And so I wanted to bring this up because we, um, we interviewed Alan Dershowitz, it was me and Ryan Grimm and uh, Emily Jashinsky a few weeks ago, and I would describe it as, pre it was pretty aggressive questioning, frankly. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, I wanna set the record straight with all, uh, and, and with all, you know, all fairness to Alan Dershowitz, and he, you know, he took, the, he took the questions, he answered all of them, he was happy to, to stay and have that interview go as long as it, as it could and answer everything he was asked. But I think a lot of people had questions about his involvement with, with Epstein based on that. So it's importantly, I think, I want to point out here, so Virginia Gouffre, who has previously accused him of sexual misconduct with, with respect to in relation to the Epstein stuff, she, she's saying pretty unequivocally that she thinks she misremembered that and, and she you know, is not standing by um, comments, statements she made about Alan Dershowitz. So I think in, in all fairness to him, it, it is important to publicize um, given how how critical we were of him, that she says um, that she is walking that back um, as as an outcome to their 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 uh, litigation. What do you to what do you attribute the turnaround? And here's why I'm asking: mm -hmm. there can be incentives on both sides to make an accusation that's false and to retract an accusation that's real. So I have no idea what happened. The only people who know what happened are uh, Virginia. Um, you know and um, Dershowitz. Mm -hmm. However, we have seen certain instances which have raised the public eye of um, Donald Trump's first wife making accusations for years, writing about it in her book, and then retracting it when Donald Trump ran for president. And there were people who said the implication was that he basically paid her off so that he wouldn't have to deal with those kinds of allegations in the context of his own presidential run when he was getting all these other accusations from other women as well. You know, and so I, you know, I, I have, I, I'm not, I wouldn't weigh in either way, because again, None of us have personal knowledge of it, but I don't think it's necessary necessarily exculpatory when a victim, uh, an alleged victim, retracts. 
Yeah, but in, in the Trump case, I mean, right, it could be either way. It could be she exaggerated those claims in the context of a divorce settlement where tons and tons sure. and tons of money was at stake, right? So we don't, we just, sure. like, we, we just, we don't know whether it was, whether that, that was where the exaggeration was taking place or like, yeah, I, I, right, I totally hear you. She, or she, or maybe it was true and then she had incentive to walk it back. Um, look, but I, I, I think, Frankly, I think like members of the public, journalists, if if the if the accuser recants in that strong language like she has here and says, no, I think I misremembered this. I I am no longer making this accusation. I, I think, it, it, from a due process standpoint, from a you know presumption of innocence standpoint, I think the responsible thing to do is is then t is is to accept what she is saying now as that that should be that that's the word on on what happened. I, I don't see mm. it, it, it. That feels right. Maybe that's unsatisfying. Unsatisfying, but that feels like the most fair thing. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. No, it, so, it makes perfect sense. Yeah. Well, a lawsuit between Dershowitz and CNN is set to take place in May of 2023. In his lawsuit, Dershowitz accuses CNN of defamation, alleging that the network repeatedly aired a, quote, deceptively edited clip of his defense of former President Trump during the first impeachment trial. So, you know, we'll have to see about that. You know, one other one of those kind of high profile defamation lawsuits against a mainstream media company, which often have kind of, you know, fraught issues because, um, opinion statements are protected. It, you know, it has to be an assertion of fact. It has to be, there has to be actual malice involved, et cetera, et cetera, and so on and so forth. But that, again, I don't know. I haven't looked closely enough. Maybe they edited him in such a way that it is clearly defamatory and malicious, but um, we'll have to wait and see. Yeah, look, the, the, as the news gets more opinion-based and, you know, the, ap the public appetite seems to be for skewed media coverage on both sides of the aisle. People want to take uh, the most popular shows are shows like Tucker Carlson, where it's not just straight news as it is opinion. I wonder if we're going to see an increasing number of these defamation suits because it does seem to be perhaps the only way to keep folks in line. My concern, however, is then, you know, who has the resources to actually sue and get their record corrected about them and who doesn't? And are we going to see justice and corrected records for people who are affluent while, you know, regular people are, are, routinely smeared um, mm -hmm. uh, by these kinds of institutions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's and a higher question. profile people on Twitter and social media and things like that. You see yeah. it all the time. Yeah, although, so, you know, sometimes we, we see examples of people who were not ho high profile people until the media came for them. And then they, you know, those mm -hmm. things like the Covington kids or set, you know, mm -hmm. people of that of that nature. So um, mm -hmm. and in a lot of these cases, it, you know, there ends up being some kind of settlement, which doesn't necessarily mean that it was defamation or would have proved to be defamation, but it was more convenient for the company and for the person, you know, to reach some agreement where they don't even get to that point. So we will have to yeah. see. We'll have more rising right after this.